Protestants also completely abuse scripture when they cite passages from Romans, Galatians, and Philippians about how no one is justified by the, quote, works of the law, or, quote, the law, and conclude that no human actions can impact one's justification. For example, John MacArthur in The Law and the Gospel. In the book of Romans, we read this morning in chapter 3 and verse 20, by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. Through the law comes the knowledge of sin. That verse alone ought to be indelibly impressed upon our minds to give us an understanding of the function of the law. The law does not save. By the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. They are completely wrong. As the context shows, those passages address the error of the Judaizers who held that people must observe circumcision and the ceremonies of the Mosaic Law, which is sometimes referred to simply as the Law, in order to be justified and saved. For example, circumcision is mentioned 13 times in Romans chapters 3 and 4 alone. Those passages have nothing to do with the fact that within the faith and grace of Christ, one must keep God's commandments and avoid certain sins to maintain justification and be saved, a truth taught throughout the New Testament and repeatedly in the book of Romans itself. See, for example, Romans 2, 6 through 8, Romans 2, 13, Romans 6, 16, Romans 8, 13, Romans 8, 17, and Romans 11, 22. In fact, the Protestant error on the meaning of works of the law is further refuted and completely exposed by 1 Corinthians 7, 19, quote, For circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but Allah, keeping the commandments of God, end quote. In the Greek of this verse, Paul uses the strong adversative conjunction Allah, which means but, to indicate a strong contrast between the two categories listed. He first gives the category of whether one is circumcised. He describes this as nothing or unnecessary in salvation. He then uses Allah, but, to strongly contrast that category with a different category that is necessary for salvation, namely, keeping the commandments of God. That's why many translations of this passage render the second half of it as, but what counts, or what matters, is keeping the commandments of God. It could also be translated, quote, For circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but keeping the commandments of God is everything, end quote. Thus, St. Paul does not put keeping the commandments of God on the left side as something that doesn't matter in salvation. No, he puts keeping the commandments of God on the other side as something that does matter in salvation. This is perfectly in line with the teaching of Jesus and the rest of the New Testament as we've seen. If the Protestants were correct about works of the law, and they definitely aren't, then St. Paul would have put keeping the commandments on the left side with circumcision as what doesn't matter in salvation, but he doesn't. He puts keeping the commandments of God in opposition to circumcision to indicate what does matter in salvation. This verse proves without any doubt that keeping the commandments, avoiding grave sins, etc., is not what St. Paul refers to when he teaches that justification is through faith apart from works of the law. Apart from works of the law, or the law, means that one is saved through the faith of Christ apart from circumcision and all the ceremonies of the Mosaic law. The point is further proven by considering a similar verse in Galatians 5.6, quote, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but, Allah, faith working through love, end quote. Here we find almost the exact same language as we find in 1 Corinthians 7.19. Paul uses the very same adversative conjunction Allah to again indicate a strong contrast between the two categories. He once again puts circumcision on the left side as something that doesn't matter in salvation, and he puts faith working through love or charity on the other side as what does matter in salvation. Protestants would admit that what's on the left side, namely circumcision, isn't necessary for salvation, but that what's on the right side in opposition to circumcision, namely faith, is necessary for salvation. Well, we just saw that in 1 Corinthians 7.19, St. Paul uses the same construction to put keeping the commandments of God, not on the left side with circumcision as one of the works of the law that doesn't matter in salvation, but on the right side in opposition to circumcision with what does matter in salvation. He puts keeping the commandments of God on the very same side as faith, which everyone admits is necessary for salvation. This proves without any doubt that in the theology of St. Paul, and indeed in the rest of the New Testament as we've seen, to be saved through the faith requires keeping the commandments of God. This completely refutes the countless Protestant misinterpretations of St. Paul's passages about works of the law. Apart from works of the law means apart from circumcision and all the ceremonies of the Mosaic law, 
not apart from keeping God's commandments or avoiding grave sin. The Protestants' abuse of scripture on this matter has led, and continues to lead, countless people astray. It's also noteworthy that Galatians 5.6 teaches that faith working through love or charity is what counts. That refutes justification by faith alone as well. For it means that what justifies and counts is not faith alone, but rather faith accompanied by love or charity, a faith working through love or charity. And those who love him keep his commandments, John 14.15. The devastating Protestant error of interpretation on this matter is illustrated in the following clip. In Our Christians Under the Ten Commandments, John Piper says that Christians are not under the Ten Commandments. He also teaches that while the commandments are nice measuring sticks, it's not necessary to keep them to be saved. He thus contradicts Jesus, St. Paul, and the whole New Testament. John, are Christians under the Ten Commandments? No. The Bible says we're not under the law. <laughs> I love God and do as you please is not bad advice if you're bent on holiness, if you're bent on love. The law, the Ten Commandments are really important. You should hang them on your wall and you should uh, measure your life by them, but in a very, very different way than when you were under them because they have been kept for you. Also, notice that while promoting his false gospel, he repeats the standard Protestant heresy that Jesus' righteousness and obedience have been credited to the believer. If that were true, then we would never find the following verse in the Bible. Referring to justified believers, 1 John 1 9 says, quote, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. End quote. Obviously, this completely refutes the notion that Christ's righteousness, which includes his perfect record of obedience, has been transferred, credited, or imputed to justified believers. Think about it. If Christ's righteousness or perfect record of obedience were credited to a believer, then the Bible could never teach, as it does here, that a justified believer would need to confess his sins in order to have them forgiven and to be cleansed of unrighteousness after the believer fails in obedience to God's law. Thus, the Protestant doctrine of the imputation of Christ's righteousness is completely disproven by this text, in addition to all the other evidence. As a remedy for those who have fallen from their justification, Jesus gave the apostles the power to forgive sins, John 20:23. 20, that proves Catholic teaching on confession and further refutes Protestantism. 1 John 1:9 1, also shows that man's actions can impact his righteousness. Thus, it's not a once and for all time legal declaration. The false doctrine of faith alone is also refuted by the fact that one must forgive to be forgiven, Matthew 6:14, and by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned, Matthew 12:37. If your actions and your words can impact your justification, then it's not by faith alone. 